Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Betty's Little Bites. I know I haven't done any interviews for a while, and we are back. I have been out there in the cyber universe looking for brilliant people to bring to you and share with you. And so today, it is my very great pleasure to introduce Carla Cherry, who I met on Blitzer, and it, she's a go-getter. So welcome, Carla. It's great to get to know you. Thank you. You too. It's awesome to be here. Thank you for having me. Sure. Anytime. So um, tell me now, who do you primarily work with? So I primarily work with coaches and consultants, and I help them attract their high ticket clients with a power offer. Great. And what do your clients need that they don't know that they need? So a lot of times clients come to me and they think that they need marketing and which may be true but most of the time it's a sales issue. Um, so I really dig in there with them in terms of trying to figure out what their power offer is. And once we do that, we lay it out their customer journey. We lay out everything in terms of how to make a sale and how to make it easy and how to guide the client to the sale. So when someone feels guided, they feel safe with you. And um, instead of you know trying to sell, sell, sell to them, you're really guiding them to it through a transformation. Yeah, excellent. Really, that's real relationship uh, marketing, you know, being with the client where they are. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what are a few things that clients get that they weren't expecting to get? So what's interesting is, you know, they're getting a, a ton of tactile, tactical stuff, um, but what's, what they don't know that they really need is they need confidence, right? So, um, in the tactical realm, you know, we're dealing with messaging, we're dealing with sales psychology, um, we're really niching down and figuring out exactly who your target is. So in order to have a power offer, you really have to um, be brave and niche down and help one specific type of person get one specific solution that and then you just add value 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 to that solution and that's what makes it a power offer um it has to be super it has to be irresistible to the point where they would just be silly not to call you um because you're solving that problem so well right and it's such a specific problem to a specific type of person so there's not broad it's not this menu of hey i've got all these things that i could do for you it's really, you have this very specific problem and I'm going to solve it and we're going to knock it out of the park. Um, so what happens is we, we really get into the messaging and we get into the sales psychology of that person. We want to um, create a transformation essentially for that target. And so what they're getting that they don't know that they're getting is um, confidence because once you step into a realm and you solve a problem so well for someone and you start seeing that transformation for your clients um, and you, you're literally changing their lives um, for the better, um, you step up. Something happens um, when you're able to articulate very well directly to your client and then you see the transformation then, then this confidence happens. This it's, it's like, oh, you're not worried about whether, you know, you can do it or you're not worried about, is this going to work? Cause a lot of my clients come to me and they're, they're nervous in the beginning, like, oh gosh, is it going to work for my client? Um, you know, most of them are, you know, they're coaches and consultants and, and, um, you're really getting a PhD. We're studying our clients. We're trying to figure out how to make the experience the best possible experience. Um, and also how to solve their problem in the best way possible. And so they get confident, they get super, super confident. And when you're confident, you attract clients. So it all, it all goes, it, it's kind of a cyclical thing. Excellent. I love it. Yeah. So what, it, what, what would you say is the main transformation that people have? The main transformation um, that my clients get is, um, I'm really essentially asking them to step up into leadership. So it's interesting because they come to me and they want the shortcuts and they want the, um, you know, just tell me what to say on social media, you know, how do I get, get, get. And 
what we're really doing is we're we're up leveling ourselves and they're they're becoming leaders in their fields right so it's not just um you know oh i'm i'm trying to get clients anymore it's having the courage and putting in the time and the consistency and um, having you know the ability to think larger and to really step up and to be a leader in your field. And that's what they walk away with. And that's what I get excited about watching that transformation. Yeah. Oh, that's so excellent. I love that. Because <laughs> that, that is really the name of the game is to understand well enough who you are and what you have to offer that you can step into that leadership role and, and be, be who you were really meant to be. So wonderful. So um, yeah. now I'm going to go into, tell me something. Well, first of all, tell me what are you promoting right now and how do people reach you? Sure. So I teach a course on all of this. It's um, your power offer course. And um, how to reach me is carlacherry.co and cherry spelled just like the fruit and Carla's with a C. So carlacherry.co forward slash about. Um, and there's a button on there um, where you can you can check out you know lots of case studies and people that have gone through my course, and also um, a way to apply to be a client. I don't take on everybody; it has to be a good fit um, because I we pour I pour a lot into my clients, and I want to make sure that they're at the right place for me. Um, so that's how to get in touch with me, and I offer a power offer audit on the phone. So no matter what, if we work together or not, I'm going to give high level feedback on what your current offer is and how to make it better, um, how to make it more of a power offer. And I'll give you a couple examples. I did, I wanted to tell you a couple examples um, of a power offer. So um, for example, I had a client that was a financial, uh, he, uh, he's in finance. And so he said, Oh, I'm tired of working with New York Life. I'm tired of pushing Wall Street products. He's a financial advisor. I want to, you know, create something on my own. And I'm really tired of all the rules. You know, there's so many rules and regulations. And um, so what we created for him was, you know, one way to do a power offer is where is there a gap? You know, who is not being served? And um, in particular for him, we went with senior women whose husbands were older and may have um, passed away or uh, going to pass away. And the women had never touched a checkbook. So it's a very specific type of person. Right. And the offer was geared everything, sales psychology, you know, you have to be very gentle. You have to, um, you know, be able to break it down. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, look at very specific types of products. You know, you know, obviously they don't need life insurance. They need to deal, you know, like um, refinancing, things like that. So um, long-term healthcare, things like that. Um, so we, we created the offer specifically around that, around them. Another example would be, I had a woman who was a video production. She was in video production. She offered videos. She did video work for people. Um, and so she used to say like, hey, video can make your business better. You should do video, use video. And nobody was biting. Right. So we changed it from that to um, how, you know, making killer testimonial videos coupled with a software that got them to the front page of Google. Nice. So that's the difference. And then I'll give you one more. Um, I had a, a, um, a, doc a doctor who was in functional medicine and COVID hit and she said, oh, my gosh, everybody you need to boost your immune system. Why aren't people coming in? And they just, you know, they, she was trying to push, push this boulder uphill to get people to be interested in their own health and they weren't. And you, you're not gonna change people's minds. Um, if they're not interested in their own health, you're not gonna get them to. So I said, you're in Beverly Hills, what can we do? What would people run through a fire for? Facelift with, with needles, she did acupuncture. so. Um, she could give a facelift type of results without the scalpel, you know, use just using acupuncture and, you know, people were coming in droves and now, Hey, now they're in your chair. Now my elbow hurts. I've got this thing. Now you've got a client for life. So right, right, it's, right. instead of trying to talk somebody into being interested in their health, you are, you know, doing something that they really, really want. So that's mm -hmm. the couple examples. Really, yeah, well thought out too. Yeah, filling the filling the need, 
And then that same person, as you pointed out in the last example, they have other needs that they're going to want to explore once they start realizing that you actually can help them. Cool. Absolutely. So tell me something fun about you that's possibly unexpected that uh, people wouldn't necessarily know about you. Okay. Um, well, I am in, I just recently moved to Charleston, South Carolina from LA. I was in LA for 13 years um, working in television. Um, I'll tell you two things. I used to executive produce a show that Larry King hosted. And so um, that was one of my, that was the pinnacle of my TV career. Uh -huh. um, and then I would say the other thing is that I'm in Charleston and I love boating and Charleston has, is surrounded by islands and people don't necessarily know that about Charleston. I had no but, idea. Yeah, there's, um, there are these, there's an island out here called Capers Island where the trees are growing in the waves and they look like Salvador Dali trees. You know how they melt yeah. in his pictures? Yeah. There's an entire island of Salvador Dali trees. Wow. Go to on a boat out here. So yeah, if you look up at the coast and you zoom in, you'll see all these teeny little islands. So we just get to get on a boat and go explore. So that's something that people may not know. That's Maybe fun. I shouldn't tell them because too many people will move here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you want it. Yeah, I know what you mean. The, the locals would like to keep that for themselves. I understand. <laughs> Believe me, living in Monterey uh, County, I understand that feeling completely. Yeah. Well, great. It's been really fun interviewing you. And uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you more. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll speak again soon, I'm sure. Take care. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It was fun talking to you. Absolutely. What a blast. All right. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Oops. Wait, no, no. I don't want to do that. I can't end the meeting. I'm trying to stop recording. I'm blowing it. There you go. <laughs> no. Okay. Stop recording. Stop.